Welcome to the Joy of Cruising podcast with your host, award-winning author, Paul C. Thornton, a weekly conversation with the amazing cruisers featured in the Joy of Cruising trilogy, comprised of the Joy of Cruising, Cruising Interrupted, and new release, The Joy of Cruising Again. Each book is a compilation of features about cruisers and cruise and travel personalities from around the world. It's the next best thing to cruising, hearing about cruising from the unique and diverse perspectives of Paul's amazing guests. Hello, passionate cruisers. This is Paul. And this week on the Joy of Cruising podcast, I am delighted to welcome George Solano. I've previously featured a cruise director, Holland America Line's former top director, Jason Venner, on episode number 26, and I've featured a cruise ship comedian, Carnival's thought-provoking, hilarious Billy D. Washington, on episode number eight. George Solano can represent the perspective of both a cruise director and a stand-up comedian. He was a popular cruise director for Carnival Cruise Line for 10 years, and for over 35 years, he has been a stand-up comedian performing at comedy clubs, venues, and cruise ships worldwide. George also appears often in and around his native Miami, a hotbed for comedy that I recall fondly from my days in South Florida. It was fun researching George, as often his time as a cruise director would turn up in the searches, and it was fun reading about cruises in the early 2000s. One said, Carnival Triumph's guests stopped him to shake his hand and to tell him how much they enjoyed his short excursion talk, his disembarkation talk, but mostly how much they liked his introductions to the shows in Triumph's Theater. They would say, you are much funnier than the comedians. Have you ever thought of becoming a professional comedian? Unbeknownst to the passengers, at the time, George was a professional comedian with many years of experience. Comedy led George to Carnival. While working the comedy club circuit, he began to do guest performances, including Carnival. When George heard Carnival was looking for cruise directors capable of performing an act, he pursued a new career that turned out to be successful, lasting 10 years, and helped establish George as a comedy star. Welcome, George, to the Joy of Cruising podcast. Pleasure to be here, Paul. Thanks for, thanks for having me. So how are you doing? Uh, I'm doing great. You know, doing, uh, uh, to me, every day above ground is a good day, so here we are. There, there you go. <laughs> So, so before we discuss the fascinating path that you took to get to where you are, uh, tell our listeners about yourself, where you're from, uh, where you grew up, where you live, whatever you would like to share. Um, well, I'm originally Colombian. Um, my mother, I'm American on my mom's side and Colombian on my dad's best friend's side. So uh, <laughs> I... Uh, I'm on, I'm on, I'm on, I'm on, I'm on lag time, but I just, I just got that. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and then I moved to the States, uh, you know, um, like in 1969, I'm, I'm going to be 66 this year. So, um, and, uh, you know, I've been living in Miami ever since, grew up uh, here, and now I live between uh Miami mm-hmm. and New Zealand I'll get to that in a second I grew up here got married real young um I got uh, three daughters from my first uh marriage and one son from my second one um you know and I've been doing comedy for 34 plus years I uh, you know I I truly enjoy it uh, I I work with Carnival Cruise Lines of course that's basically the only cruise line I've worked for and uh, you know, I mean, I'm just writing it out until I decide not to do anything, not to do it anymore. But they just keep on throwing money at you, so it's hard to say no. Yep, yep. So as as they say, uh, you ain't new at this. No, no, no. So, so I know that you just got off a cruise where you were a performer. That's where I first started interacting with you uh, uh, while you were still on the ocean. Talk about that. Yeah, uh, it, it was it was a very interesting because um, this is the first time I've ever been to uh, Greenland. We went to Greenland. Less than one percent of the people in the world 
have visited Greenland. Well, there's nothing really to see other than the Northern Stars, which, you know, which is great. Mm -hmm. uh, we were able to catch that. And also a lot of icebergs. So it kind of, uh, we reflected a lot on the Titanic because those <laughs> icebergs were huge, man, huge. Were we you were not even, I wasn't even expecting, you know, expecting it, you know? Were you nervous uh, at all? I'm sorry? Were you nervous? No, no, no. The captains that we have and they're, you know, they navigate. It's not like the old days, you know, like in the Titanic and stuff. But uh, this, uh, it was great. Um, uh, I learned a lot about them and I learned that they, uh, their del delicatessens are like whale blubber and seal. And not my, I mean, I like to eat, but I pass <laughs> on the blubber. Yeah, me you know? too. And, me too. Um, so we were there. I was there for uh, uh, nine days, no, eleven days, and then you know I I got I headed back. I'm here for a few days, and then tomorrow I head to the west coast to join the Carnival Radiance in Long Beach, and for another like like, like I'm doing a whole long month thing. I'm going to be Radiance Panorama, then fly back uh, from Puerto Vallarta all the way to Puerto Rico, join the celebration. You know, so it's, it's, it's an interesting life that I love. So in that in that Greenland cruise, uh, what ship was that again? The Carnival Legend. Legend, okay. Oh, was uh, was uh, uh, Ken Burn on there? Oh yeah, of course. I, I've known Ken. We known each other over thirty years. It was great oh. to see him. Uh, we sat down. We had dinner. Um, he's a great guy, man. The singing metro diva. Yeah, yeah, I had the singing maitre d on the podcast. So I guess about three weeks ago, and I tell you, Ken is beloved because it has become almost the the number one podcast I, I've done. He's he's awesome. I, yeah. I, you know, he's a very interesting guy. I mean, we both got lots of stories. You know, <laughs> some that we can't tell. But, <laughs> you know. We were reminiscing the other day. <laughs> Actually, it seems like I've heard that before about stories with Ken. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Many. <laughs> so so on that nine-day uh, cruise, it was, it was nine days on Legend, right? I was 11. 11. Actually. 11. So how, how many times uh, did you have to perform? Nine. Wow. Uh, wow. Were there other... you, it was an older crowd. And when I mean older, I meant these people, I think, were the original passengers on the Titanic. But <laughs> I was, I'm not, they were in the 80s and, and, and they were like the the nicest and hottest crowds, man. They, they were hip. And, you know, I'm talking a, a lot about getting old now, you know, so I identify with them about pains and stuff like that. Sure. But they were, they were such great crowds to not just me, but to the other two comedians that were with me. And we had a fantastic time, you know. If I may ask, who who were the other comedians on board? Joe Marlotti, fabulous comedian. Mm -hmm. He's a great guy. And then uh, I just met him, and he's the coolest brother. I tell you, I've never met a brother that's so mellow. Steve Wilson. This cat is like, <laughs> he's, and he's funny, and he's a great guy to hang with. So we made, I, I made a new friend, man. Good, uh, you know? good. I'm actually going to hang out with him in the West Coast when I get to L.A. Good. So now you, did I hear you correctly? Carnival is the only line you, you perform on? Yes. Okay. I mean, I've been offered uh, working on, on the other cruise lines, but Carnival basically fills up my schedule, always has, mm -hmm. since 1990. Um, I never had to go or never had to ask them to why aren't you giving me work or anything? You know, I am. I'm blessed to be uh, amongst the top tier comedians. You mm -hmm, know, mm -hmm. um, I saw that you had Billy D on your on your podcast. He's another great guy, good friend. Yep. You know, and I and I uh, I feel blessed to be amongst those rank. You know, yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I mean, <clears throat> I truly enjoy Carnival. Uh, Carnival has always been my family. I, I made so many friends from all over the world, and but they've always treated me right. I raised my both my families mm -hmm. with Carnival, you know. Right. And so I'm a I'm a total Cardi man, 100 100. Well, I, I've been on a number of cruise lines, 
But uh, when it comes to comedy, no one comes close to Carnival. No. I'm proud to say that I'm one of the guys who, you know, was, uh, you know, always pushed for the having the type of comedy club that we have, um, you know, and um, uh, since I was a comedian, um, I started with Carnival as a comedian, what we call a fly on entertainer. Right. And uh, then uh, in, in 1999, was it? Yeah, 1999. At the end of 1999, I I uh, I was asked by the, you know, by the big bosses to see if I wanted to become a cruise director. Then I became a cruise director for ten years. So I've worked really hard on our product, and I'm proud of what we have. You know, um, everybody in our in our punchliner works hard, and and they and they take pride, but because they know that you have to be a top performer to be able to, you know, to hang, yeah, to work it. Yeah. So, uh, so I alluded to that somewhat atypical uh, path that you took uh, in the intro. Uh, you started as a stand-up comedian, then you became a performer on, on cruise ships, or I should just say on Carnival, and then you became a cruise director yes. to, where, to where you are today, where you are a comedy star, although you happen to work still with, with Car Carnival. So, so take us through that path. Uh, so, yeah, so my first 10 years with Carnival, I did what we call the fly-on program. At that time, it wasn't like the way the punchliner is nowadays, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we were, we would get on, let's say, on a Monday, do one or two shows, and then get off on Tuesday, you know, or whenever the next port of call was. So we were basically there no longer than two days. Mm -hmm. um, then Carnival uh, wanted to have cruise directors that had their own act. Because a lot of the guys, you know, sometimes you have uh, acts that miss the ship and stuff like that. And uh, some of these guys only had, they were very limited on what they had as a backup. Mm -hmm. So one day I was uh, walking around and uh, one of the big bosses came up to me and says, hey, man, we've been talking about you in one of our meetings. Uh, which, you know, when they talk about you in, one, in, in, in their meetings, it's either good or really bad. Right, right. <laughs> Yeah, at, goes, at, at his at his level. <laughs> he goes, don't worry about it. We've been thinking that maybe if you want to give it a shot of being a cruise director, um, you know, I had management experience and I had done a lot of stuff with you know, uh, with my own business and everything. And and I said, yeah, sure. Uh, I worked a great deal with them. And then I met, gave him a commitment. I said, well, you know, I, I'll commit to this program, but if it doesn't work out. I want to be reassured that I can come back and continue doing what I've been doing all this time. They had no problem on doing that. And then um, it was a, uh, it was such a great time because I totally dove myself into that job, which he was a 24 seven job, basically, man. He was, I mean, it was, it was working hard, you know, just think you're in charge of the entertainment and you're the voice in the face of the ship, everything falls on your shoulders. But, you know, I've never been afraid of tackling anything. And I was a pretty successful cruise director. Um, I mean, I had help from guys like John Hild, which is one of the top guys. You know, he's a, a, our, our, our brand ambassador and, and a couple of other guys. Mm -hmm. But they were my mentors and they guided me. And um, I was also very, I'm very proud to say that I was also one of the top guys. I I put a lot of butts on the seats, too. I promoted some great cruise directors and mm -hmm. uh, I fought. Uh, for for what was ours, I didn't have an easy path as far as uh, being liked by uh, um, top management because I was uh, on ships on, on shipboard. Right. Because I'm 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 not one of those guys. They stay quiet, and I never, you know, you're talking to you working with uh, management that's actually sometimes younger than you, and they they talk to, down to you and stuff like that. And I'm like, no, 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 <laughs> you can talk like that to a 21 year old, but you're not going to talk to me like that. So they actually didn't like me. Uh, some of them didn't and eventually became my friends. And some of them, you know, <laughs> but uh, here I am. Yeah, you know, I mean, I, before, before the, uh, the the cruise director job, you were, sounds like, pretty successful in your own right. And, and yeah. then you were in management. I think, was it was it uh, pizza? Oh, uh, yeah, with, with Domino's and, you know, and uh, another place called uh, Casinos. Yeah. We yeah. built that, that company from scratch. 
Uh, unfortunately, the main uh, investors were involved in some kind of scam, so the government closed it down from overnight. But we were we we went from two stores to like twenty nine stores in less than a year. We were like we were really yeah. But I was already um, I was already doing amateur comedy, and you know I knew that this was the path I wanted to take because it didn't matter how much money I made, I was never happy. You know. Yeah, so, uh, I'm only happy when I'm on that stage. So you you weren't a kid when when they took you on as a as a cruise director. You had already you no. Know. I was uh, I was uh, thir- I was going to be thirty. Mm-hmm. So so so. Oh no! When I when they took me on as a cruise director, no, I was. She's uh, in my forties already. It must have been pretty successful because you you did it for ten years. What made mm-hmm. you? Uh, if I may ask, why did you leave? Um. It was time, man. It was the times were changing. I saw it coming. They were changing a lot of stuff as far as uh, you know, um, salaries, and they wanted. They were looking for younger guys, you know. Like I was already my late forties and stuff, and I'm not one of those guys that's going to jump on top of a table with two different color socks. And uh, you know, I mean, I can barely even get up to <laughs> walk to the table. Never mind jumping on top of it. <laughs> <laughs> and um and I said no. And so uh punchliner um came about and then I became the brand manager for, for punchliner after I retired as a cruise director and here I am man you know here I'm still mm-hmm. I'm not the brand manager anymore which is cool I I enjoy just going on doing my shows I have no pressure just in the fact that just just go make people laugh and you know Mhm so let's go back in terms of your cruising history. Talk about your first cruise. What what and when was that? <laughs> My first cruise was in 1990 and I was actually uh, okay, so I was how the house and sea at uh Coconuts and at uh, the Improv in Miami. Mm-hmm. And we were coconuts in the Coconut Grove and a buddy of mine who was working with Carnival, Eric Lambert which is, uh, he runs his own company, he's very successful, said to me, you know, Carnival is looking for comedians and they want me to ing- to uh, MC the show, but I'm going to be out of town. Can you do me a favor? Can you MC this show for me? And I'm going to, you know, I already, they already got the people they want to see lined up. I said, no problem. So we we go on, it's, a, it's like a Wednesday night, it's pouring down rain. There's maybe about, there's more comedians than, than audience there, right? But, you know, when you're a house MC and that's your house, you, you learn that whether you have one or whether you have a full house, you got to have a good time. So anyway, so I'm MCing the show. First guy goes up, he eats it. Second guy goes up, he eats it. So I'm going in between and I'm doing bits and picking up the crowd, bringing up the next guy, eating it, right? At the end of the night, the guy calls me over and says, come here, man. He says, I'm not going to hire any of those guys that I saw tonight, but I want to hire you. I'm like, hey, dude, you know, like, I don't want to step on anybody's toes. You know, these are like established comics. He goes, they might be established, but they don't know how to handle a crowd, blah, blah, blah. Can you do it? I'm like, yeah, sure, man. I mean, so I was all happy, right? I'm ready to go. And they uh, scheduled me on the original um, Mardi Gras. I got there, man. It was like a... The, or- the original Mardi Gras. Yeah, dude, I was... Which is like a lifeboat right now on the <laughs> on the, on the new Mardi Gras, right? <laughs> And I and, and we're departing from uh, Port Canaveral. I get there, man. It's this little tiny ship, right? And I'm used to like I'm already being on the road, and you know, you get to the nice condos. I was starting to headline also, and I get there, man, and I got like a really old cabin. The air conditioning was leaking, um, and I'm like, oh my god, this is what cruise ships <laughs> are about, man. So I get there. And my first show, it was like a, it's like performing for people in the living. It was smaller than the club, really. The, and everybody, it, it was rocky, so people were puking. They were sitting. There. Oh. <laughs> and I do like ten minutes. I wasn't used to really working clean, but I had to do like a family show, a, a ten minute show. And then I invited people to my my midnight special that it was called. I get to the place, man. It's like a little tiny uh, closet, right? It's like you know maybe. <laughs> 50 people. There's only two college drunk girls there. 
right? So I'm like, I was nervous too when I was like, oh my God. So I just sat there with them and I just, I was just made them laugh. And then, and I'm like, there's no way, no way I'm going to be working. Like, there's no way I don't, I'm not, I don't want to come here. I mean, the money was okay. But then that night, back in the day, you know, we didn't have any communication. You took off on the ship and then if they needed to get in touch with you, I think they, they sent like a, you know, like a pigeon or something. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, I get this little letter that says, George, we need to for you to get on the fantasy tomorrow, which it was the first fa- class of that, you know, the first trip of that class, fantasy class. And I'm like, there's no way. Please do us a favor. I get on and it's a total different ship. It's a, this big ship, it's 70,000 tons, which is like such a baby compared to what we have now, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh, so this is it. And that's when I met John Hill, which he was the cruise director. And the rooms were big, and I'm like, oh man, I can I can get used to this. And that, you know, so from then on, I just started getting work. That was it. That was it. Did you have any uh anxiety approaching that first cruise on on Mardi Gras? Um, yeah, yeah, I mean, especially when you know, I mean, you 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 know, you're really fairly new to the to the business, but but then you're really new to the ship business, and you know, I was like, oh man, you know. So I didn't know, like, they had formal nights, you know, um, I had long hair, hair, you know what I mean? I was like, and, and, but I, I did have anxiety for the first year, I think. I was nervous. I, I always, you know, I, I, I wanted to make sure that I was doing everything right. You know, the more, then I got more and more comfortable, more ships came out. You know, I started becoming one of the top guys. I started doing uh, inaugurals with the new ships, along with, you know, guys like Happy Cole, Eric Lambert, Thomas Brown, you know, mm-hmm. big, you know, nice guys. The, to this day, with the exception of Eric Lambert, um, you know, Happy's still around. Happy's very successful online. And uh, uh, Thomas, very funny people, you know. And uh, yeah, man, you know, and we just kept on going. Talk about. Were there any highlights in those early days, uh, other than, of course, that 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 second ship you got on the fantasy class ship sounded like a highlight? What what are some of the early highlights of cruising? I my highlight, my one of my always will be one of my highlights. Uh, I I met uh, Duke Daniels, who for a long time um, with the platters. Oh, okay. And that guy was the nicest, most beautiful guy ever. And him and I became great friends. And we became the show of the week. So they would put their pairs together and we would travel to different ships. And um, he was just, uh, with Carnival, the comedian always closes the show, right? But with Duke Daniels, there was no such animal, right? You, you know, he you gave him the respect and he was, one of those entertainers, man, that I didn't know how many times I, I knew what he was going to say and I knew what he was going to say. But to this day, even though he's passed on, I, I was watching one of his old shows the other day. He brings tears to my eyes because and goosebumps because he was mesmerizing, you know, and so, I would just sit there and watch him. And I'm like, man, you know, this guy can just have the audience in the palm of his hand, you know. So so he, time. he was performing solo. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, mm-hmm. and he would do all the whole thing, all the platters, medleys, and all that, and people. And that was one of my greatest highlights, uh, you know. And then um, just meeting some great people that are now, like, in Vegas, top musicians, and uh, having great friendships. Can, do you, uh, can you, you remember any? Can you name a oh, couple? Oh, yeah. Steve Faulkner, uh, uh, Steve Lee. These are all top musos that, like, Steve, you know, um, Fletch, uh, you know, what I mean, uh, I mean, uh, there's some great dancers, you know, Tracy Giddens and girl, there, uh, uh, Lorena, uh, oh God, what's her, uh, her last name? Um, she's a she's on in Fantasy, which is the top rated show in Vegas. She's a great singer, she sings national anthems all over the country, and you know, all these people that, um, you know, we were family and we worked on a ship, and then. You know, um, on a, on a ship, man, you you become like a family with an I call it microwavable friendships because let's say you and I work on a ship mm-hmm. and we're going to be there two or three months or whatever. We'll most likely start eating breakfast together, lunch together, 
dinner, go out to the crew bar, uh, go out in ports to get, because, you know, what else is there to do, right? And um, and then you can have a friend for six months and become better friends than anyone you've known for years because you get to know them. Right. And every single mood, every single part of their being, when they're happy, when they're sad. So, yeah, man, I mean, that's the, the to me, the highlight of, of my carnival career has been that I made an, another family. It doesn't matter whether they're, they're from Russia, Ukraine, you know, China, whatever. They're they're, and then you don't see them for one or two or three years. And when you see each other, you pick right back up where you left off. Right, right. I like and that. I like that. Microwavable friendships. Correct. And and then you know, uh, uh, you know the the uh, Facebook is great because you keep in touch with them, and you know. You don't remember everybody's birthdays, but Facebook reminds you. And, you know, uh, they, they talk about when they have kids, when their family passes on, you know. Mm -hmm. And we're, we're, we're a big support group, you know, big support. So then cruising came to a screeching halt due to the <laughs> pandemic. Were you on the ocean at the time? Yes, I was on the uh, carnival breeze. And then we we had gone and then we had gone out and then they said, we're going back. And, and but we're only going to be off two weeks. Yeah. That, <laughs> so, so, so they hoped. And uh, so we, we got off and I'm like, what, what is going on? You know? And um, and I, we went to we were we traveled from Galveston. There was no car, no taxi. We managed to get an Uber that charged us three times the amount, which so we paid wow. like three fifty. Um, and um, Carnival, we bought our own tickets. Carnival says we're going to reimburse you in a couple of weeks when you get back. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I mean, then you know, then you started getting worse and worse and worse. Um, I uh, then two weeks came by. They said, "Now let's wait another two weeks." Then another two weeks. Then it became a month, you know. And it kept on going on and on. And I, um, I was, you know, I've always been blessed, man. You know, like I, I was not with my wife at the time, my ex-wife. Uh, but you know, I was paying still all the all the bills at the house, and I still have a family in New Zealand and all that. So she was very ill. She had uh, polycystic kidneys, and she had her kidneys removed and everything. So I. Talked to my girl in New Zealand. I said, look, I'm going to move back into the house because I, I'm not working and there's an extra room. You know, no problem. And then I, I was able, and I, I'm glad that I did because I spent like a year with with Angie. Right. That was my first wife. She's a great girl. And, you know, it, just because we didn't work out didn't mean that we right. had to be enemies or anything, right? And, um, and then it happens that they were going to do a double transplant and everything went wrong and she passed away. Now, tomorrow is her birthday, so, you know, uh, I was like, man, you know, like running around today trying to get everything done before I travel tomorrow. But anyway, so um, I moved to the house, and I'm like, oh, man, what am I going to do? And a friend of mine, his name is Bob Diamond, and I always have to give him a shout-out because that guy, mm -hmm. I met him on a cruise. <laughs> talking, he's like, listen, you and I are talking, and I see this cranky white dude <laughs> with two phones, you know, he's talking, and what the hell is this? I'm telling my friends, look at this guy. This guy's crazy. Next thing I know, he moves to basically next to us and he joins the conversation. So, you know, typical other entertainers, they don't want to deal with it. They all get up and they start leaving. Now, I'm not going to be rude to the guy. And I sat there with him and it was like three o'clock in the afternoon. I told you something, Paul, we clicked right away. Then I found out he was my neighbor. He lives mm -hmm. like less than five minutes away. It was 11 o'clock at night and I had an 11.30 show and I go, bro. I have to go change. And we've been friends ever since. Anyway, he has a company called uh, The Protocol, which is uh, for, uh, is, uh, he put together this uh, formula for people that have peripheral neuropathy, mm -hmm. which I did. And, you know, I didn't pay attention or whatever. And he comes, so 
uh, three three months into the pandemic, I was starting to get going crazy. And I go to him, I give my colleague, he goes, what are you doing? I go, I um, mean, um, you know, nothing, you know, just be crazy. He goes, why don't you come to my warehouse and hang out with me? I went to the warehouse and I got to tell you, uh, I, when I was young, I used to work mm-hmm. for Wackener Corporation and I was the warehouse manager. And I'm, I'm a, I like to have everything tidy. I walked in there and let me tell you something, Paul, th- that <laughs> that warehouse was a mess, bro. So I walked in and I'm like, man, what is this? So I start, you know, fixing everything. Goes, hey, look, I can't pay you as much as you get on the on the shifts, but you know, you're more than welcome to come and work with me. Man, and let me tell you, for I guess how long was it for another year and something? I worked with him. But he wasn't really work. He would pick me up at nine at ten o'clock. We would go eat breakfast, <laughs> go go to the to the go and find something to eat later for lunch that we would cook there. We would make all kinds of videos because he's been a producer and all that. And then we would put the orders together and come home by three. <laughs> so he was like, and yeah, man. So he helped me out all the entire time during the pandemic. So not not a not a bad way to spend the uh pandemic. No, man. And you know, making some money because I didn't get any, like some of the guys got unemployment. I didn't get any of that. Mm-hmm. And uh, he helped out to this day, man. He's still uh, my greatest friend. Today I'm I'm cooking. Uh, it was his wife's birthday yesterday and, and his birthday before yesterday. So I'm making them also buco. I'm cooking for them, making them, and, you know, making them a dinner. And, um, but he's great, man. No matter what, um, I was recently ill with, uh, something happened to my leg. I couldn't walk for a few months. And I had to travel to New Zealand. He gave me the a scooter. Let me tell you, the scooter, whether you're ill or not, is the way to go because you bypass all the lines. <laughs> you get on first on the plane, you know. But, uh, yeah, he, he's a great guy, man. So, like I said, I've been blessed with friendships and and people that always been there to help, man. So what was your first cruise back? Uh, I was <laughs> I was supposed to do the Horizon. And I sent my passport six months before, and they lost it. Oh, wow. So now I have to cancel an extra month of work because they I can't do it. So funny story. I'm watching TV, and I'm really pissed off. Like, what am I going to do? They told me it's going to take another 15, 16 weeks. And there's this Latin lady going on the news. I may not get no passport. Uh, I, I, uh, I call it the uh, congressman. And I'm like, wait a minute. Let me rewind this. Call the congressman. And then I go to my friend, Bob, I go, look, I'm going to call the con- my congressman. Well, let's make a $50 bet that he's going to be useless. <laughs> this is a Tuesday afternoon. So I call. No one picks up. I leave a message. Well, my name is so-and-so. Uh, I applied for my passport. I, I need to my passport to go to work. I had to cancel extra work. Next morning, I keep on getting these phone calls. Like at 7 in the morning, I kept on ignoring them, right? Finally, I get a message that says, Mr. Solano, this is the secretary for Congressman uh, Martinez. Wow. I, we made an appointment for you because we couldn't even get an appointment at the at the passport agency for today at 10.30 a.m. Please <laughs> let me know. It's now like 9.15. I'm like, ah! <laughs> so I, I called Bob. I go, bro, come pick me up. Take me to downtown. And, and we were, he, was, he was laughing because where are my 50 bucks? I go, bro, get me. <laughs> <laughs> I get to the agency and the guy that was the long ass line, right? I get there and I I see this. Um, they, they have this guard. He's walking up and down. He goes, George Solano, dude, I've seen you a million times on the cruise ships. I said, oh, oh man, man, that's great. He goes, come with me. <laughs> he bypasses me in the line, bro. Gets me all the way in there to the, to the window. Wow. I was like, Damn. and the girl goes, Oh, Mr. Solano, I'm sorry. You know, we we lost the passport and then he came back, but we didn't know where to send it. I go, what do you mean? You got my address. I even had paid extra money. So uh, she goes, he said, okay, if 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 we give you your passport today around two in the afternoon. Oh, well, let me go. <laughs> yes. Hello? <laughs> so I got my passport, but I was so happy. I was like going around. And sure enough, then I started working. I went to, 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 to the Liberty. It might have been the Liberty. Uh, again, seeing some my my friends. And we had to stay. When we got back, we couldn't just get on and off, right? We had to commit like three or four weeks. Right. 
out of town. And we had to get tested every almost every day. And we couldn't get together with the crew and we could go into crew areas or whatever. But, you know, you're happy to be back at work, you know. And uh, getting back on that stage, trying to remember you. <laughs> your... But you were back in your element. Awesome. Exactly. And it's like when people say it's like riding a bike. It's true because you get up there. But sometimes I would be in the middle of the joke and I'm like, oh, oh, damn it. I forgot the setup because the setup would mm-hmm. come to me, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, at times I forget the punchline and I would just, I'm very honest. I would say, Hey, look, I screwed up. Let me start over. And, and the, the audiences were also very happy to be. Of course. Cruising again. <laughs> so everybody yeah. was very forgiven. And man, let me tell you, I've had a, a great time. I had a, you know, yep. ever since yep. we've been back. So, so now George, you mentioned a couple of times, New Zealand. Yeah. Help me out. Well, during my cruise directorship, <laughs> I met uh, the girl that used to cut my hair. She was what they call a Steiner. And we, did, we have a saying in, 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 the, in the cruise ships, there's nothing finer than to wake up with a Steiner. <laughs> but anyway, uh, <laughs> she hates that. <laughs> and uh, she used to cut my hair, and we became really good friends. Now, she said to me, you know, I don't want to do this anymore because they put a lot of pressure on you. And I said, and I liked her a lot. She's 24 years younger than me. I said, hey, why don't you come to entertainment and I help you, you know? So she said, oh, I need a six uh, month hiatus or whatever. And I said, don't worry. So I got her all, all set up and I requested for her to be with me, for me to guide her and everything. We were friends for, um, you know, I mean, real good friends for a year. And then one day I told her, I think, you know, I think, you know, you hang out with me all the time for a reason, you know? And she's like, no, baby steps and, you know... <laughs> She, she was like always worried, like, you know, you're older and I'm younger and people are going to look at me and I'm like, hey, look. She goes, no, they're going to gonna think, you, you know, uh, like you're my dad. I go, well, who's your daddy anyway? And, uh, <laughs> and, and she's really, it's funny because uh, Kiwis don't have a really that, but they're super, super, they're beyond white. They're transparent white. <laughs> <laughs> no, they got no sense of humor. And she, used to, she would just look at me like, you know, <laughs> uh, and man, then we were friends and we did a, um, we did a, a, a cruise. It was a charter with the uh, Leonard Skinner. Yes. And I, I had already been, I had already been their cruise director and, uh, Billy who passed away. He was the, still one of the original guys that played the piano. He comes out, he goes, Hey man, you still haven't gone together with this little girl. And I'm like, no, he goes, man, you're slow. And then, he, and then, they're in the middle of the concert. Her and I are standing on the stairs, and he goes, and Billy, they stop the concert. Billy goes, hey, you know, our, our cruise director, George, he's been after this this little girl for a long time. I don't think he he has the right drug, <laughs> something like that. You know? <laughs> he goes, but I asked her, I asked her, what song did she like? And she liked uh, Freebird. So we're going to play Freebird, and because we play Freebird to her, for her, she's going to go out with him tonight. So uh, Billy says, you guys are going to go, if we play Freebird, you guys are going to go out and we, we want details. You know, it's like, and we actually went out on our first date that night and that was uh, January, January 16th and we've been together, uh, we're going on 16 years. Wonderful, One, wonderful story. And and she, let me tell you, man, um, I stepped in it twice because she's beautiful. And I, what I mean, I mean, she's really stunning, and uh, and her family's rich. <laughs> and, uh, so... <laughs> that's that's all right, man. <laughs> and when I go to New Zealand, I'm not the one that cuts the grass. I actually have a white guy that cuts the grass. <laughs> for me, How lucky can I be? So 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 has <laughs> so has your your lady been to the U.S. Oh yeah, man! And as a matter of fact, we're making plans for her and my son. We I have a son with, with her. He's ten, and then I have a grandson who's one month younger than him. Wow! He's going to be ten uh, on the fourth of this month of September. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, but her and I, man, let me tell you. I, now I'm making all the paperwork to to you know to be able to reside there and. It's, it hasn't been easy for us to, uh, you know, to be together in the sense of uh, 
um, you know, for resident status and stuff like that. But we we chose to bring up our kid in New Zealand, which is a safer country. And it's beautiful over there. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's like four and a half million people, 60 million sheep and a lot of happy men. But, uh, you know, so. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, they only have one comedy club in the whole country. So I cannot make a living there. So that's why I have to need to I need to come to the States and work. But we make it work, man. And, you know, she's just, you know, I, I can't even describe. I can't give enough credit to everything she does. She's just for a 41 year old. She, man, she's. She's. A, I told her she's an old, an old soul because she has her, her head together, and she's the one that puts me in my place sometimes when I'm, you know. Mm-hmm. And I've learned a lot of stuff from her, and she's just great. And my son is the same. My son, my son is very, um, you know, it's a lot like her, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. And um, and he's the whitest Latino kid you've ever seen. <laughs> in your life. They're never going to ask him for papers anywhere he goes. <laughs> but. Um, you know, it's just, it's great. You know, we're making it work. We, we love her. I love her very much. Um, um, my daughters had, a, you know, they're having a hard time kind of like, because they still have the thing with the mom. Sure. And, but I don't, I don't press for it. But however, they love my, their little brother, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know? So, uh, you know, they, they talk to him and, you know, all that stuff. And he's coming to the States. So I'm actually, he's actually going to meet, Two of them, my girls for the first time and his nephew. Plus he's got another step nephew and the little one that just born, uh, Angie, uh, you know, is, is <laughs> she's so cute. She's like seven months old. So he's, you know, dad, I can't mm-hmm. believe I have, I'm an uncle to three, to three kids. <laughs> thank, thank you for, for sharing that, that story. And I wish uh, you and your, your both families wish you the best. Thank you, buddy. Thanks, man. It's, it's been great, so, man. I appreciate you letting me do this. Uh, you know, uh, no, I appreciate you doing. You know, it, so. and you know, it, it, it's not often that people get to know who we are. You know, they just look at us on stage, and you know, and they just see the guy who's crazy or the one that talks about all this crazy stuff, but they don't really know. I mean, you know, um, sometimes you're on stage and you're going through things, like when my my sister just recently passed. And she was going through all this stuff. And, you know, like I would get phone calls right before I got on stage, you know, and then your your, your mind is all tortured, you know? Yeah, and You have yeah. to for those 30 minutes to deliver and be funny because you're not there to hear, oh, mm-hmm. I'm sad, you know? And, and, and so many people are going through also so much, you know? It's like some of the comedians mm-hmm. get upset when they go, oh, my God, you know, they were everybody was laughing except for that stupid lady or that stupid guy that was sitting... And I used to be like that. I got to tell you a quick story before. It was like in 97, I sat there. I was killing men. And this this lady like this one. And it was like, it was uh, the 30th of December. And I'm like, man, this woman, why did she even come to the show, you know? So I, mm-hmm. I was all upset. Now, 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 for the listeners, you know, uh, uh, George folded his arms. Oh, yeah, and, sorry, yeah. And, 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 <laughs> yeah, but basically, basically the, the, the woman was unresponsive, unresponsive. While, George, while George was killing it. So it's like about one in the morning, and, you know, I, I'm i walking around on lead of that, and there she is sitting down, and then I'm like, oh, God. And she calls me over, and I said, and she goes, you want to have a seat? She goes, let me tell you something. I look, my husband passed away. Three months ago. Wow. And my kids thought that it was a good idea for me to come and cruise on my own. I didn't think it was. But then I sat there and I watched you and you remind, it makes me, you know, and I watched you and you reminded me of my husband. You have the same sense of humor. She goes, for those 30 minutes, I was mesmerized remembering you. Wow. And ever since then, dude, I don't question anybody that's not laughing. Wow. What a, what, what, that's, that's great. And 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 you made a connection with her. Oh yeah, we we after the show. If you hadn't have done that, you'd forever wonder why wasn't you getting through to I'm her. I'm still in touch with her with her daughter because she actually passed away about five years ago. But I kept in touch with her, and she used to go. She she said to me, "You got the same six sense sense of humor that he did. Your smile, the way you you know." And all this time, I thought she just hated me, man. Uh huh. Uh-huh. Right. So. When I see people that are like that serious, I don't question them because 
God knows what's going through their head, man. You know what they're going through. You know, so yeah, you know, I mean, I, I, I'm just there to whoever has want to have fun. I, I'll have fun with me. I'm very relaxed on stage. You know, I'm not the guy that just goes by the script. I improvise a lot. I'm there to have a good time. We yep. don't know how long we're around. Right, right. So, so what are you up to now, on on land or on sea? I know you said you were getting ready to to take off again. Ah, uh, man, I got so I I literally have a so much work with Carnival. I leave tomorrow, and I don't fly. I don't come back until the twenty fourth overnight, and then I end up coming back uh, like October second or so for two or three days. And then I split for a whole month, like, you know, like, so I'm working quite a bit. Thank God. Because I just spent four months now working in New Zealand. Do you ever travel for uh, personal reasons, uh, leisure travel or non-cruise? Oh, yeah. my I, One of my daughters, now she just moved to Utah, but she was, uh, her husband is in the armed forces and they were living outside Philadelphia. So I go visit her. Mm-hmm. Um, my, my, my wife and I, my but so and I, we, uh, you know, we plan vacations and, you know, we, you know, we go around. Uh, we just, I just, I was just in New Zealand four months and we went all over, all over the country and we had a lot mm-hmm. of fun. What What's on your bucket list in terms of uh, travel? Oh, uh, my bucket list. Um, <laughs> honestly, man, I mean, as far as travel, the only place that I would like to see, uh, I would like to go back to Colombia. I haven't been since 1970. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and take and take my son and all that because uh, they want to see where I was born and all that. And but my bucket list, uh, my true b- bucket list is to uh, parachute. <laughs> parachute. Yeah, but I'm gonna do that last just in case it's my last. <laughs> <laughs> but my uh, my daughter did that, and uh, I said, "Well, I'll let you be the one in the family. I'm not gonna try to." try to emulate that my uh when i was young our boss my boss was um like i told you i worked at whacking hut his daughter uh was getting married and and her and her, and her boyfriend jumped off a plane and their air and the parachutes didn't open get out I, honestly and uh and uh they both it was in key west they both they both died a day before oh, their wedding wow. Oh my goodness! And there was an investigation oh and all that. They always said it was an accident, but come on, man! Two at the same time. Wow! wow. So, but ever since then, I've been saying, "Okay, I'm going to do it." But then I always remember, you know, and I'm like, then I go to my, I go, I go to stuff. I go, babe, uh, do you want a parachute? She goes, hell no. <laughs> <laughs> just, and then she goes to me, just make sure that the life insurance is. is, is. <laughs> Well, you're you're going you're going to do that last. Well, good luck. I'll 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 follow it on social media. <laughs> so so how so, do I how do I get to so I I would like to uh, link up so I can listen to your podcast. Uh, oh yeah 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 easily. My, my easy. son wants to. My son is like, Daddy, I want you to send me the link. I'm like, <laughs> no problem. So so how can fans follow you? On social media and the internet. I'm on, on social media. I'm on Instagram, Comedian125. Comedian125. And and on Facebook, I also have a fan page, which is Comedian125. And just they, they can Google. My name is J-O-R-G-E-S-O-L-A-N-O, Solano, George Solano, Comedian. And they can send a friend request. I don't have many left. I think I got maybe a couple hundred, but I accept I don't accept, friend, you know, friend requests that has like one picture and right. one friend. Right, right, right. You right. know, you know, chances are that's a hack account. So, and right away they want to talk to me. And I, I like when they, you accept the friendship and right away, hi. I'm like, how did you, how did you know mm-hmm. me? Oh, I saw your picture and, and, and you just look so, uh, have you heard about this program? so before we let you go uh george a couple of light or maybe fun uh cruise questions uh and then perhaps an oddball question i say oddball in that it doesn't necessarily have anything to do with cruising so so the first question this is an easy one i use this to to get ideas i I recently was on a 16-day cruise and i never ordered the same drink twice in one day 
So, so what's your favorite cruise? I get ideas from people like you that I interview. What, what's your favorite cruise drink and cruise food? Okay, so uh, as far as I don't drink often, I have I drink once in a while, but I like uh, I like the uh, uh, mojito. Okay, I like mojitos. Um, they usually make it at the Alchemy Bar, and they make excellent mojitos. They make excellent everything at the Alchemy Bar. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, uh, uh, kiss on the lips, and and the guys used to get upset when I asked. Them for that. <laughs> but um, I. Well, 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 some, well, some, not well all. it's it's a good thing it's, it's a good thing you don't ask for this drink. Sex on the beach. Oh yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> and um, as far as the food goes, man, to me, uh, uh, you mean like in the dining room, like where the people eat for free, or just one well, or yeah. one of the signature ones? Whatever. What do you like? What do you like to eat on cruise ships? I eat. I eat like I mostly go to the signature restaurants because I've been on on, on board the ship. But now with the XL ships, you've been on the XL ships, right? You've been on like the celebration or something. Yeah, I was on. I was on Mardi Gras in man, uh, in August. A friend of mine, CJ Jones, funny guy, man. I mean, if you ever have a chance to, oh, he was. Oh, I, I yeah, he was on the ship. I was on in August. Uh, he. And, and then he came. Uh, he came here. I live in uh, uh, North Carolina, uh -huh. Mooresville, right out, uh -huh. right outside Charlotte. And so he came here, and I went to see him there too. I love it. Well, he introduced me to shrimp and grits, man. Oh, let me tell you, bro. I, 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 I said to him, I'm not going to eat grits because, come on, bro, you with a brother. I'm like, really? I didn't notice that. <laughs> except for, except for, you know, with you, especially. So we went. So shrimp and grits. I like. I love emeralds. And then, of course, the steakhouse, man. You know. Yeah, yeah, we we did emeralds when we were in Mardi Gras. I love I love that because we had done one of his restaurants when we were in New Orleans. So he, you know, he's our, he's our he's the main in, he's the man in charge of our food now. Now, yeah, yeah, I saw that. I saw that. A uh, question. The second question is: What's your most wonderful or memorable or funniest or even most embarrassing cruise or port experience? Port experience port yeah cruise or or one of the port cruise or port experience. uh embarrassing <laughs> well my most memorable was me doing finishing a show on the carnival destiny at the time which is the sunshine and i get a message and they said hey man gallagher wants to talk to you and i'm like gallagher really because I, I was working with his brother who has stolen his hat <laughs> And uh, Gallagher, and Gall I, for the listeners, Gallagher is the guy who would smash the watermelons and all of that. Yeah, the watermelons. Yep. Yeah. And uh, who recently passed. And I said, all right. So I call him and he goes, man, I loved your delivery, blah, 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 blah. I want to hire you to help me write a book. I mean, um, uh, an act in Spanish for uh, Vic Dunlap, which I didn't know at the time that he spoke Spanish. So I became really good friends with him. And I and I. I stayed on that ship for about six weeks, and uh, he helped me get some great gigs. So that's my most memorable as far as that. My embarrassing uh, thing was uh, <laughs> introducing the captain, and my tuxedo was a bit too big. And while I'm introducing the senior officers, my pants just fell, <laughs> fell down. <laughs> get out! <laughs> uh, uh, and the captain. And the captain. Now, 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 George, in the past, I've said to people who tell me things like that, photos or it didn't happen? Well, um, I think some of my first hours, I mean, I was on stage, but I remember the captain going, you should eat more. <laughs> I mean, I I, would, I picked him up really quick, but he was just like, you know, you're in a tuxedo and you're trying to do that. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the master, captain. <laughs> and my points were like, if somebody had pulled him. Wow. <laughs> I'm sure the audience. I'm sure the audience thought that that was playing. Of course, of course, they always think when something. But uh, and 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 I love ports. My most memorable port is always been, um, you know, Cozumel, man. You can mm -hmm. go to Cozumel a million times, and you can always find something to do. It's beautiful. Well, next time you go, they have a you get a twenty dollar beach massage. Oh yeah, that's that's what yeah, that's what I I liked in Cozumel. So the oddball question is. So you have a very large following. You said yourself you you almost out of a 
uh, space to accept Facebook friends. So welcome uh, to the many uh, George Solano fans who are listening. Share one thing that my listeners and your fans don't know about George. That I was a wrestler in school. Okay. And that my second path, I, I think they know because I cook a lot, but that's my, if I wouldn't have been a comedian, I would have been a chef. That's my second passion. Do you have a signature dish? Uh, my signature dish would be lamb shank. Okay. And re- and uh, rosemary lamb shank. I I I, uh, I I I perfected it <laughs> in New Zealand recently. <laughs> I cooked a lot of lamb there. Right, right. But I I can cook anything you want. Well, George, thank you so much for coming on the Joy of Cruising podcast, and and all the best to you in your comedy career. As I said, I, you know, I was on, I was on Carnival in August and I've got three cruises booked. Uh, so, so I won't be going on Carnival for a while, but, but when I'm ready to go on Carnival again, I will look real hard to make sure that I go on a cruise that you're performing. That would be great, man. Cause I, you know, I'd like, I'd, I'd love to meet you Thank in person. Same here. And, and uh, you've gained also a, a, a new fan. I'm going to make sure that I listen to your podcast. You're very interesting, and I appreciate it, man. Thank you so much. Oh, well, thank, well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for, for saying that. It, it was fun, man. It was fun. Yeah, I enjoyed it. I know I ramble on, but I'm Latino. <laughs> you know, I start talking, and, you know, I just don't, you know, typical Latino thing, man, you know? <laughs> Felt like I felt like I was talking to somebody I've been friends with for quite some time. Awesome, man! Awesome. And you have uh, you have you have a great crew, safe trip uh, headed over. All right, Paul. Thanks, brother. All right, my friend. Take care. All right, George. As they say, I will see you on the ocean. All right, my brother. Take care. Bye bye now. The joy of cruising and cruising interrupted each. $16.99 plus shipping and new release, The Joy of Cruising Again for $18.99 can be ordered at the link on the Joy of Cruising Podcast.com. For each of the three books, use the discount code Joy of Cruising Podcast and get $4 off. The Joy of Cruising books are also available at Amazon. Order the ebook at Amazon or your favorite online retailer. Stay in touch by joining the Joy of Cruising Podcast Facebook group or following the Joy of Cruising Podcast on Instagram. We're constantly adding new shows. Please leave a review and tell a friend about us. We hope you enjoyed this brief escape to the ocean. See you next week.